Today we'll go over how to convert from tick to square root price x96 and from square root price x96 back to tick. First, let's start off by reviewing some of the variables. We'll say that P is the price of token 0 in terms of token 1. The square root price x96 is defined to be the square root of P times Q96, where Q96 is equal to 2 to the 96. The tick is defined to be a number where 1.0001 raised to the tick is equal to the price P. If we take the square root of P, then this is equal to the square root of 1.0001 to the tick. It doesn't matter if we raise 1.0001 to the tick and then take the square root, or if we take the square root of 1.0001 and then raise it to the tick. These two give us back the same numbers. From this equation, to get the tick, we'll need to take the log of base square root of 1.0001 of the square root of P. Let me show you what I mean by here. So the square root of P is equal to this expression. And then to get the tick back, we'll need to take the log on both sides. So we'll take the log of square root of P and the base of the log will be the square root of 1.0001. Make it clear that this log is the base of the square root of 1.0001. I'll put it here, then make it a little bit smaller. And then I'll wrap uh, parentheses around the square root of p. So if you take the log of base square root of 1.0001 of the square root of p, and we do the same on this side, then we get the tick back. The last equation is the equation that we're going to need to calculate from tick to square root price x96, and from square root price x96 back to tick. So let me show you some equations. Let's start off by coming up with an equation from tick to square root price x96. Our starting point will be this equation. So given that we know the number of the tick, then what we're trying to find is square root price x96, and this is equal to this equation over here. I'll copy it and then paste it here. And that is the number that we're trying to find. We also know that the square root of p is equal to the square root of 1.0001 raised to the tick. And we're assuming here that we already know the number for the tick. So I'll copy this equation and then also paste it here. And then since we know the tick, this will be our starting point. This will be equal to, this will be equal to the square root of P. To get the square root price x96, we'll need to multiply the square root of p by q96. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. Since we're multiplying this side of the equation by q96, I'll have to do the same on this side of the equation. Paste q96 over here as well. And now notice that the square root of 1.0001 raised to the tick times q96 is equal to the square root of p times q96. And we know that this is equal to this equation. So this equation is equal to the square root price x96. So I'll move the square root price x96 over to the left, over to the right. And that is our final equation for calculating. Given that we know the tick, we can calculate the square root price x96 by following this equation. We can also calculate the other way. If we know the square root price x96, then we can calculate the tick. So again, let's start with square root price x96. We know that square root price x96 is equal to this equation. So I'll copy it, paste it here. And what equation are we going to use to calculate the tick? Well, we said that the tick is equal to this equation over here. So I'll copy this and then paste it here. This equation says that if we know the square root of price p, then we can get the tick back. Here we're saying that we know what square root price x96 is, so that means that we can calculate the square root of p. Square root of p will be equal to dividing both sides of the equation by q96. So I'll bring q96 over here. And then we're dividing square root price x96 by q96, and that will give us back the square root of p. And once we know what square root of p is, we can plug it in here. So 
I'll replace square root of p with square root price x96 over q96. And that is how we get back the tick. Take the log of base square root 1.0001 of the square root price x96 over q96 and that will give us back the tick. Let's go through an example. For the first example, we'll say that we know what the tick is and we'll try to compute the square root price x96. Let's say that tick is equal to this number. This number I got from the Uniswap B3 USDC ETH pool contract. So to get the square root price x96, the formula that we're going to be using is this. So I'll copy it, paste it here, and I'll move the square root price x96 to the bottom. And let's compute this equation. We know that the tick is equal to this number over here, paste it, times Q96. Now Q96, this is equal to 2 raised to the power of 96. And the other simplification that we'll make is that the square root of 1.0001 raised to this power is the same as dividing this number by 2. So what I mean here is, I'll copy this, paste it here. This is the same as dividing the tick by 2. And whatever number we get, we take 1.0001 raised to that power. And this will be equal to the square root price x96. To compute this number to get square root price x96, we will be using Python. Inside my Python Jupyter Notebook, the first thing that I'll do is import the math library, import math. Next, I'll define what Q96 is, capital Q96. This is equal to 2 to the 96. Next, we will write a function that given a tick, it will calculate the square root price x96. So I'll say def tick to sqrt price x96. This will take in a single input of the tick, and then it will return the square root price x96. So to do that, we'll say return 1.0001 raised to the tick divided by 2 and then we'll multiply this result by q96 and lastly since python returns decimals we'll cast this into a number an integer by wrapping the whole expression in int here we're saying raise 1.0001 to the tick divided by 2 multiply the result by q96 and then ignore the decimal part and just give me back the number part, the integer part. Let's run through an example. We said that tick is equal to this number. To get square root price x96, we'll call the function tick to sqrt price x96, and then pass in the tick. And then I'll execute this script by hitting control enter. And that is the square root price x96. I'll copy this. And back inside here, I'll replace square root price x96 with the number that we found. So I'll paste it. Okay, and that is starting from tick with this number, the square root price x96 will be this number in pink. Let's go over another example. Let's say that we know what the square root price x96 is. Let's say that we looked at the contract for Uniswap B3 USDC WEF pool contract, and we know what square root price x96 is. From that, how do we calculate the tick? Let's go through an example. So this big number that I got, I got it from the Uniswap B3 USDC ETH pool contract. We'll say that square root price x96 is equal to this number. And what we're gonna do here is from this number, compute the tick. To do that, I'll scroll up. And the equation that we're gonna be using is this equation. Copy, scroll down, and then paste it here. We know what Q96 is. Q96 is 2 raised to the power of 96. And we'll replace square root price x96 with this number. And that will give us back the tick. Copy this number, paste it here. Evaluate this equation, and this will give us back the tick. So I'll put the tick down here for now. 
Now notice that we're taking the log of base square root 1.0001. You won't be able to do this calculation on most calculators, so that is why we're using Python to calculate this expression. Back in my Jupyter Notebook, let's write a function to calculate the tick given the square root price x 96. So I'll say def sqrt price x 96 to tick. And for the input, it's going to take an sqrt price x 96. And it will compute the tick. First, we'll compute the base of the log. The base is equal to math dot square root of 1.0001. Next, we'll calculate the square root price. Notice that the input is square root price x96. This means that this number is the square root of price multiplied by q96. So to get the square root price, we'll need to divide this by q96. p is equal to square root price x 96 divided by q96. And lastly, we'll need to return the log. Return math.log of the square root price, which is p. And the base of this log will be the base that we calculated in the first step. And the last step is that we'll return the integer part of this expression. So we'll use math.floor. Here we're using math.floor because math.floor will round down whereas int will just ignore the decimal part. To show you this, example of this, if we do int of minus 1.5, this will ignore the 0.5 part and return minus 1. Whereas if we use math.floor of minus 1.5, this will round down, this will round down minus 1.5 and we'll get back minus 2. So that is the difference int will ignore the decimal part, whereas math.floor will round down. So that is why we're using math.floor over here. Okay, so let's run through an example of this code. So I copy the square root price from the example. We'll say square root price x 96 is equal to that big number that I just copied. And then we'll call the function square root price x 96 to tick passing in square root price x 96 and then execute the code and we get that the tick is equal to 204632 calculating the tick we get back 204632 so those are examples of calculating from tick to square root price x 96 and from square root price x 96 to tick